Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically, welcome back to my Masterclass series where I go above and beyond my regular tank reviews to help you with things like three marking, getting more ace tankers, or just taking your gameplay to the next level. Today, I'm going to be looking at the most dangerous light tank in the game. This is the AMX 13105, which is dealing more damage than any other light tank, and because of that, it is ferocious on the battlefield. Today, I'm going to be giving you my opinion as to why this is a much more fun tank to play than its medium tank counterpart inside the French tank line, the Bat Chatillon 25T. So the AMX 13105, why is it good? Well, it has an autoloader, so it can deal 1070 damage within 5.45 seconds. That is a great amount of damage for any light tank to deal. And the fact that it's only got three rounds in its magazine means that its reload is not even that bad at 27 seconds, so you can quite happily fire one or two and then reload the entire magazine without too much of a penalty. Undoubtedly, what is amazing about this vehicle is it has just a little bit better top speed and reverse speed than the Bat Chat, but most importantly, eight degrees of gun depression. This means that your AMX 13105, which has eight degrees of gun depression all around the tank, is actually very flexible for working ridgelines, unlike the Bat Chat with six. And while the tank definitely has some downsides, like its poor accuracy at 0.42 and its poor view range at 390, there are many builds that you can make to try and mitigate these weaknesses. Crew-wise, the AMX 13105 is one of the more high-pressured tanks in the game. The commander fulfills three roles, the commander, the radio operator, and a loader. While your gunner is performing two roles as an additional loader on this tank, and your driver is just a driver. Accordingly, I would recommend zero skills for your commander and your gunner at a bare minimum. One of the biggest pressures that this crew has is whether you want to take intuition, because you're going to have to have it on two crew members. And unless you've got six skills or so, that can be quite a tricky thing for the commander because you must have concealment, you must have recon, you must have situational awareness, and you must have brothers in arms. And so then your next choice is, do I want to get repairs, intuition, or eagle eye? Well, that comes down to personal preference. For your gunner, I would thoroughly recommend you have dead eye on this vehicle and designated target in addition to concealment and brothers in arms, and then try and get intuition if you can, but only bother with intuition if you're going to have it on both the commander and the gunner, otherwise it won't work effectively. And for your driver, you can just take really whatever you want, as he is quite a low-pressure role. For the equipment on this tank, I personally like two builds on the 13105. One is full damage. I love vents, aiming device, and vert stabs. That turns this thing from being an inaccurate tank to being quite an accurate one, allowing you to amplify what is one of the best things on this vehicle, and that is the combat capacity. What I love about the 13105 is with having two different builds, you can make it so you don't really feel sad about playing even city maps, because you know there's going to be a light tank on the enemy team, and as long as you have a bigger impact than them, that is how you can pump up your win ratio. My second build on this vehicle is going to be for the scouty maps like Malinovka and Prokhorovka. I'm personally going to take a vision system, an exhaust, and vents. However, let me clarify the lack of coated optics on this vehicle can significantly impact your view range. I only get 447 with my field mod choices. Accordingly, when I'm playing on my free-to-play account, I lose the exhaust and I take coated optics instead, which makes up for the loss of using bond vents on this account as well as a premium consumable, which we can see is actually adding 31 meters view range on this tank. Field mod recommendations on this vehicle. Firstly, I'd recommend taking the top speed limit on this tank. Next, I'd recommend very much the accuracy on this vehicle because the intraclip reload prevents you from really making use of the improved reload time so much. Then I'd recommend improving the reverse speed on this vehicle to allow it to dance even backwards around its opponents. For the penultimate field mod, I would personally take concealment if you're using the same build as me because you can still get 447 meters view range while also getting 50% camouflage with the exhaust build, which is just silly and allows you to be a hyper scout. However, if you're missing something like recon, situational awareness, or you don't want to use bond vents on this vehicle, then you actually might not want to take this field mod or even go the other way because you've got to have at least 445 meters view range. So use your noggin, adjust your statistics of the vehicle to make sure you have at least 445 meters view range, but dump as much as you can into concealment because that is what keeps you hidden and allows you to outscout tanks. For the final field mod, I would recommend improving your ability to see your opponents behind foliage as if they're moving in the open, 
that's not really so much of a big deal. Anyway, let's see what the most dangerous light tank in the game can do on the battlefield. So firstly, we're going to be rolling out on Malinovka. This is probably the second best light tank map in the game. And so you've got to be rubbing your hands with glee when you get this kind of an opportunity. So of course, you're going to be using your scouting build, not your damage build on a map like this. I'm running exhaust, vents, and the... Uh, the vision system on this vehicle, which means that yeah, I'm packing 50% camouflage on this tank. So good luck with my opponents being able to see me unless I get pretty darn close to them. Now, what you're also going to see here is that I want you to judge whether 445 meters view range or thereabouts is enough to have in World of Tanks when you are using a vision system as well. Now, what I feel is that once you've actually managed to get your camera rating up to kind of like 45, 50, 55% camo, you're not really getting spotted in bushes unless you're being proxy spotted. Everyone knows that from Prokhorovka or when you're even on Ghost Town and you're doing the, the, the bush line run. Uh, I think it's down the nine line of that map. Quite often what will happen is light tanks won't actually see each other. So I feel that having as much camo as you can is just the best way to set up a light tank. And I feel that view range, especially, while it is a nice statistic to be able to invest into, especially if you're a free-to-play player, uh, because you're you're going to have to invest into that because you can't really get your camera rating as up as much as you would want. But once you start to get your camera ridiculously high, you you don't have a problem spotting the heavy tanks and the medium tanks. Medium's more a bit of an issue, but you don't have any problem spotting the heavies and most of the big tank destroyers with the vision system, even with about 445 meters view range. But the fact that you have the concealment allows you to make plays that other tanks could only dream of, and you can get into positions that they just really wouldn't expect you to be in. So let's take a look here at how we're going to deal with this manticore right now. There's one below us, and we see they pop up, and I'm worried. Am I going to get spotted? Does my sixth sense go off? No, it doesn't. I'm sitting in a tree and behind a bush as well, and because I've got that 50% camouflage, even a manticore can't see me at, like, what, about 100 meters, 120 meters away here? But they don't have a bush to be able to work in, so they're not going to be able to have that position. And I've basically stopped them from doing what they want to do, which is they want to drive up here, along here, and sneak into this bush. This is one of the kinds of positions that you have to learn to dominate, and you have to learn how you can bait enemy light tanks into making mistakes as well. That is the key to winning Prokhorovka and Malinovka in a light tank. It's not good enough to just know what bushes you have to go into. You have to also contest your opponents by setting yourself up in sneaky positions to deal with them. Because one of the worst things you can do in a light tank is to die early inside the game. And look at the risk that I just made there by shooting at that FE-405. I genuinely didn't expe expect to get spotted. And dude, if, a, if another FE-405 had been waiting and hit me, I would have literally just thrown the game there and then. So, bit of a misplay there by me. I'm lucky that I got away with only 300 damage taken. But what you want to do is you want to try and set yourself up, counter the enemy light tanks, and once you've countered the enemy light tanks, what you will be able to do is just absolutely monstrous on these kind of maps and even your kind of b-grade uh light tank maps you know your red shires um i'd say moravanka is still a grade uh but there are maps where you can still be a very proficient that aren't just malinovka and uh prokhorovka right and now that we've got rid of the manticore even though there are two manticores left i feel that now it's safe for me to be able to push forwards and because we've got the hill there's no chance of the enemy sitting up there and shooting down on me. And now I can just spot, spot, spot. And this is exactly what you want. We're lighting up that FB405, although it doesn't look like it's just me. And I'm a bit greedy. I'm trying to go for my third mark of excellence here inside this battle. And so I'd love to shoot that as well. So I don't have to share the spotting with the manticore that's spotting a little bit behind me. A little bit of a, a toxic mentality, but unfortunately... That's the game. That's third marks of excellence. If you want to uh, be able to get them, you're going to have to think about uh, trying to maximize those numbers. And so if two people are spotting and you have the opportunity to damage the target safely, then you don't have to share the spotting with the other player, which will mean that you're effectively getting twice as much as you would do if you were to just sit there and stay spotting. 
So this is where that reverse speed comes into effect from the field mod. It's just really quick and sneaky to be able to get into a position. And the 50%, that FP405 wouldn't even spot me even if I was in a bush. Or well, if I wasn't in a bush, I should say. Probably even the M5Y wouldn't even spot me if I wasn't in the bush right now. So I'm thinking like, can I really resist dumping on this FP405 right now? And the answer is yes. If I fire right now, I, there's an FP405 that isn't spotted. There's two manticores. There's a leopard. There's an SDB1. It would be absolute suicide. But luckily for me, even though the GW100 blind fires my bush, it doesn't manage to hit me directly. And there we go. Now the FP405 is starting to get dealt with. And again, I make a greedy play trying to accelerate this game and try to steal as much as I can for myself. And I did not expect that that manticore was so close to me. Okay, so we've had a mediocre game so far for Malinovka. Only like 4,000 combined. It's a, it's a very poor game. Well, now it's starting to pump up 4,500 combined. But that's because what I'm going to do now is take a risk. And... When you're trying to three mark light tanks, it is all about risk reward. It is not enough to just chill. It is not enough to sit back. And sometimes you've got to go, okay, I've had a reasonably good game. I've, I've held my marks, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a risk now to get forwards and to see what we can do. And uh oh, got to hit this next shot, otherwise the SW one's going to kick my butt. Luckily he doesn't, and there we go. Now we're lighting up all the self-propelled guns at the back. We're lighting up the SW one But you know who the real prize is? An unspotted FV4005. That is what I want. If I can get the unspotted FV405 and oh baby, that's 1,800 spotting right there, even misses me. And I'm gonna possibly even finish reloading. How am I still alive is what I'm asking right now. Well, we finish off the Manticore, we finish off the FV405, and that is how we changed with uh, undoubtedly a lot of luck. We changed a game that was like four and a half thousand combined now up to 10,000 combined. And it's making sure that you're alive for that part of the game, where the game explodes out, that it's oh so important to do when you are playing your light tanks. So if you find yourself dying early, don't, especially if you're trying to mark. Dying early is not the right thing to do. Now I'm not telling you to go and be, be super passive and to not try and do anything early on in the battle because if you don't do anything early on then maybe the more aggressive light tanks on the enemy team are going to spot your team and you're going to be out of it but before you jump into the bath like put a few toes in find out whether you're going to burn yourself hopefully lay some traps for the enemy light tanks and then boy are you going to uh, reap the rewards later on and also when you see that the battle is going to be a win, that is your time where you have to get in as quickly as you possibly can to get as much as you can for yourself. So patrol duty ace tanker here for the AMX 13105. This was 10,000 combined. The other Manticore that we were in competition with got 7,000 assistance as well. But it shows you that the damage dealing capabilities of the 13105 are just way above even your like god tier scouts like the Manticore. So we were able to get the extra four kills and the extra 2,600 damage. But when it comes down to it, when you are trying to three mark this vehicle, you are going to be in competition with their other light tanks. So while I'm not saying to abuse them, there's no use in sitting back and allowing them to be able to get all of that juicy spotting. But remember, scouting isn't the only thing that the 13105 can do. And honestly, if you play this vehicle only as a scout, you're not going to be using possibly its most fun playstyle, which is the damage build. Using vents, aiming device, and vert stabs on this vehicle. And I'm using a smooth ride directive as well to double that effect to allow me to run and gun, so to say. And now the 13105 it's kind of like a, a medium tank with regards to its accuracy, with, with the 0.42 just improving itself. Now, what I just did there was very important. You see how I've knocked down the trees so they align up in a bush row? That means that now you can be able to get yourself into position and you can even just drive out into the trees there. So you've basically, I've basically created just, I've made this an entire bush line so I can just play around with uh, here. So make sure you knock down those trees in specific areas. Honestly, if I was an artillery on the enemy team, one of the first things that I would do is probably splash an artillery shell there to try and knock the trees down in the other way, because it would basically mean that nobody would be able to use this position. Uh, but that would be some real high level artillery gameplay to be able to do that. And obviously there's no guarantee that they're going to be even in that position. All right, so what you're going to see here is a play style that you're going to have to develop in a 13105 which is being sneaky. This tank, in these kind of scenarios, where 
A more traditional single shot tank will just pop out, fire one, and then pull back. That's simple gameplay. The 13105 has a much higher skill cap. And that is that how many shots can you be able to pull off, right? It, you, it's so tempting to be greedy to fire the full three rounds, but it will take you nearly five and a half seconds to be able to do that. But instead, wait for your opportunities, wait for those moments, but also remember they've got sixth sense, and so if you're spotting them, uh, they're going to be blind firing you, so you've got to watch out for that as well. So I come around the corner looking for the, the 705A, but instead find a 268 version 5. We put our first round in, we're going to put our second, and the third would be too greedy. So I really recommend in this vehicle, don't be greedy. Be happy with two shots, fire a couple of shots, and then start your reload. Your magazine is only 27 seconds. If you've got vents and a premium consumable, that will significantly reduce that, even with the field mod that increases it by 3%. And so, don't be greedy. Take your time. Now, what you're going to see in this game is that APCR rounds are great, but once you get into thick matchups like this against big armor, then the heat rounds on this vehicle can be very nice as well, apart from when you're shooting through spaced armor on the side. The heat rounds have got 280 millimeters of pen, and so they and they don't have any penetration drop off. So for when you're shooting at unangled armor that's thick, the heat rounds are irreplaceable, and the APCR rounds can only do what they dream. Now, this is quite an interesting moment. Uh, you see that I didn't reload the full mag because I felt like with the E100 aiming at me, I only really have a chance to fire a single shot. So, when you really want to take your gameplay to the next level in this tank, you've got to be thinking, like, do I need two? Can I only fire one? Shall I reload the entire magazine to try and get two off? And in this scenario, I'm never really going to get to fire three. Not with the amount of guns that they have and the possibility of just being absolutely evaporated by any one of the vehicles. So right now, I'm looking for that 268 version 5. I'm using the ring on the minimap. And that Centurion was waiting for me. I'm very lucky they missed. I'm lucky that I didn't get hit from the back. So, it's tricky. When you set your vehicle up like this, now you don't have the exhaust, you don't have any of the benefit of the extra camo rating that you would be able to have, that 9% camo, I think, that you get from an exhaust, 8 or 9% camo. So, you, you are definitely a lot easier to spot. But is it worth it? I think so. Now, it's going to take you a lot of games to be able to figure out, is this a damage map or is this a spotting map? As a rule of thumb, the spotting maps are maps like Redshire, Malinovka, Muravanka, Prokhorovka, and possibly when you start to uh, know what you're doing, uh, definitely maps like Ghost Town, and then also maps like Stajanki and uh, what's the other one? Pilsen. You will probably be scouting those maps as well. The damage maps are more like Himmelsdorf, Runeberg, possibly Paris. Paris can be up and down depending on how many light tanks there are on the enemy team about and tank destroyers as to whether I think that I'm going to be able to get vision. So basically your city maps. This map as well, it looks like a map which should be good for scouting, but since Wargaming changed it, it's definitely better to contest this, this high ground. So the three mark requirements for the 13105, when I did it, I think they're about like 4,200 combined. And so that's where this damage build can really come in handy because you're never going to really be able to get the spotting, at least in a stalemate game. But you can consistently deal damage in this vehicle with this damage build. And look at the gun handling now. It's not too bad, and we're able to just get our shots in. The bloom after firing is definitely manageable in this kind of a scenario, and we can fire pretty much on reload, fully aimed. And because we've got 4.25% better accuracy from the, the bond fence. We've got, what, about 8% better accuracy from the aiming device. You can take a tank that would really feel like it has Soviet heavy gun handling and improve it to having more of a traditional medium. So this FE is actually going to play way better than I anticipated. They're going to ram me up the, the slope there. It's kind of inconsequential unless he fires an AP round, uh, but luckily he doesn't manage to. We finish them off. And that shows you how proficient you can be with the damage build. 5,300 damage while also getting 1,400 assistance. This is not a great map for a light tank, but to be able to come in and get 6,700 combined, that really helps when you're trying to pump up your three mark.
And with a little bit of practice, you can even contest top spot on your team with regards to damage, even when you're playing again with some very dangerous tank destroyers. All right, so now we are rolling out on Westfield, and this time I am going to be on my Plays for Free account. So now all of you free-to-play players out there are hopefully going to get a taste of what you can still achieve with the 13105 without having the advantages like bond equipment or a premium consumable. So you'll notice with my build that I'm taking the same scouting build that I use on my main account. However, I've had to drop the exhaust to take coated optics. So really, I'm not getting that much better view range, honestly, on my 13105 on my free to play account than my main account. And that will be the difference from the premium consumable and from the bond vent. So really the difference between uh, your pay to win uh, 13105 and your free to play 13105 will be, well, firstly, a huge amount of accuracy because you've lost 5% accuracy from the uh, the premium consumable alone. But the fact that you just have way worse camo. So if you're a little bit more sneaky, you can still do the great spotting, as we can clearly see. We're seeing the Lerva at max distance. We're catching the Saladin out in the open. But you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, you should expect to get spotted in scenarios uh, that... Otherwise, on your main account or on your, your pay-to-win account, or just if you were a pay-to-win player, could be able to get away with. So the main thing that I'm worried about in this game is there's a T100LT who's not spotted. We also find that there's a UDES coming in. But with, I believe, two shots possibly against the Lerva there and one on the UDES, this is a, it's a pretty good start. But I'm really worried about this UDES coming after me. And I'm hoping that all of these medium tanks, the four of them who aren't advancing and who are just chilling in position, they're going to be able to help me out. And there we go. Great shot into the side of the UDES. He misses the top of my turret. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I can come around the corner and I can harass the UDES. Or at least I'll pretend like I'm reloaded and hopefully he'll back off so he'll give me enough time to be able to reload the full magazine. So I'm going to pop up here. I'm not expecting to still be spotted by this UDES. Uh, but... I'm going to reverse into the situation and see if we can be able to finish them off. But, oh, God, T100LT. And now you can see that when you don't take vert stabs on this tank... Oh, no, the gun handling's horrible. And, oh, goodness gracious, boys and girls. Everything went wrong there. We took two hits from the T100LT, one hit from the UDES. Awful stuff. And luckily for us, the Batchat has come in, but we're unable to see the T100LT anymore. So the Batchat's not able to finish him off or put any kind of pressure on the T100LT. To all intents and purposes, is still on full hit points. So ugly stuff. We're only at 3,400 combined here. And we're in a very close game. We're unsure whether the North is going to be a win. And I'm a tier 10 light tank, for goodness sake. With a, a tier 10 medium tank, the Batchat invested here. If we can't beat this T100LT with a UDES... To all intents and purposes, this game will be lost for our team. So we're just going to keep working up in this bush, try and keep spotting this UDES, hope that somebody's going to get a shot in. But also, uh, the thing that I'm most concerned about is the T100LT. If he high rolls, I'm gone. If the UDES doesn't significantly low roll, I'm gone. If the artillery hits me, I'm gone. Uh, yeah, I think you can see uh, the gravity of the situation here. The bat chat takes a hit from that T100LT, and I realize that T100LT now is playing very well. They're playing confident, they're working a ridgeline, and they're playing to the strengths of their tank and negating my strengths, which is to have the autoloader, right? The whole point of this vehicle is to dump out multiple rounds, but unfortunately, when you've thrown away all of your hit points very poorly, then it doesn't matter, right? So I do expect that I'm going to get proxy spotted there by the UDES, but it actually gives me a little bit of hope that I might be able to get this T100LT. So we connect one shell into them. I'm still asking for shots on the UDES, but unfortunately the T100LT re-stealths. So I'm asking this bat chat for help right now. They've got hit points, and if they can finish off the UDES, then that means that I'm going to be able to get some spotting on the T100LT. But unfortunately, the bat chat doesn't seem to be on the same, wave, same wavelength as me. And while they're trying, now they're exposing themselves to all of the tanks in the side. And oh, goodness gracious. The T100LT is now just coming around the corner and just snacking me. So I say in all caps, help. And to be fair, with that clutch shot onto the UDES who thought he could come around and finish me off, the bat chat does help. What a legend! They're going straight in against the T100LT. You can see the T100LT was aiming at me. I actually ricochet a shell from the char, and the bat chat is in. I'm communicating, telling the uh, bat chat that I'm reloading, and I'm just hoping that he's going to finish him off. Uh, he rams the T100LT a little bit, but it's left the T100LT on two hit points. So I'm hoping that somebody's going to be able to finish off the T100LT. Now that I know that I'm no longer spotted, the panther finishes them off. 
and I give a thumbs up to the Panther. So a huge play there by the Bat Chat to finish off the T100 LT. And now, just like I said uh, with our game on Malinovka earlier, once you have light tank supremacy on a very bushy map like this, let's see what we can do with it. This is going to be our game from now on. Whoa! Yeah, that would have been a, a pretty brutal way to uh, reward the Bat Chat for their the sacrifice of those hit points. This game is still neck and neck about as close as it gets and all it takes is the Kampf Panzer playing well against the T-123 and then the North has all opened up and even if the 705A gets taken out by a 60TP who luckily isn't full health then we're actually down on hit points quite significantly right now unless the Kampf Panzer is low. So we get this the scorpion spotted out in the open. We get the char. And remember, you have to drive back behind the bushes to be able to shoot through the bushes without getting spotted. But unfortunately, we still get spotted there anyway. So unless it was the scorpion who spotted me from above, I feel the need to really chase down this char. And I'd really like to highlight, do you see how big this reticle is? It's like a pineapple on the middle of my screen. But it's still okay as long as we're stationary. But there is a significant difference between a build like this and a build that uses vert stabs and the aiming device. So you definitely have two different flavors of the 13105 from that regard for your choice of the different maps. So it looks like we're still down by a thousand hit points unless the Kampfpanzer is uh, low on health and the Kampfpanzer just finishes off our bat chat so we're going to have no artillery support. Talk about bat chats, our bat chat is going in like a hero right now but this is the dream for this tank. Nice squishy tank to be able to aim at. We finish him off and then hopefully we're still going to have one more shell. But the bat chat actually high rolls for 460. And I'm going to fire my last shell on the Progetto blind. And suddenly this game is actually looking pretty good. Apart from the fact that they have a full health Progetto. But I know that I've got better camo and better view range than him uh, with the vision system. And so I should be able to just spot out. Both me and the bat chat spot the Progetto. The Progetto finishes off the bat chat. And the Skoda T50 has finished dumping in their magazine. Looks like they hit... Two rounds that were either high rolls or three rounds that were incredible low rolls there. The Kampfpanzer's coming across and oh, I just don't quite even have enough gun depression with the eight degrees to be able to finish them off. I've got to be careful here. I'm on 64 hit points. If I get spotted by this Kampfpanzer, it's going to be very embarrassing. It'll be the mother of all throws. I hit its tracks. Don't take them off. Luckily, connect the second shell. And am I going to go for a reload right now? Oh, yes, I definitely am because I am spotted. So we're up to now 7,000 combined pretty good and this is why that bat chat providing that help was just so important it won the game if you can give your light tank an advantage i'm not saying that every light tank is going to carry the game for you but honestly i would trade a medium tank for a light tank on the enemy team any day of the week if it means that our team has a light tank on a bushy map and they don't everybody knows that on prokhorovka if you have a light tank and they don't because their light tank screwed up at the start of the battle that the game is almost forfeit unless then it becomes game of throws and the uh, your light tank decides to uh to, to throw or should i say their light tank decides to throw but look at this this is where the 13105 just feels special and it shows you that oh apart from the accuracy there at the end it really shows you that you don't need vert stabs on a vehicle like this when you're just sitting completely still. But for when you need to make reactionary play, of course you do. So this was a great game for the 13105, showing you that you don't have to have all of the bells and whistles to still have some incredible results. So that round showed that you can dominate in the 13105 even without using all of the fancy advantages like bond equipment or premium consumable. With the free to play account taking down nine thousand combined there with near five thousand damage and four thousand assistance we get a high caliber didn't fire many if any gold rounds to make a hundred thousand credits profit although that was with sixty five thousand boost and one step towards getting third mar three marks of excellence not just on my main account but also my free to play account next up i want to talk about something really important and that is you know your maps create a plan with your team communicate at the start of the battle i say hi friends i will spot the middle at the starry i guess i meant start pre-aim if you can and immediately we have an amx cda 105 who presses affirmative so you telling your team what you plan to do before doing it will at least give them more of a chance to be able to react to the scenario when i'm in a matchup like this where i'm playing on corelli assault and i know that i need to commit right at the start of the battle then it's important that you can give your team all of the opportunity that you possibly can. 
So I'm locked in a duel with a Manticore, and their Manticore is level 350, suggesting to me that they have played a lot of games in their light tank, because I'm going to have to watch out for them. So I've managed to light up four tanks, no Manticore, however, and unfortunately, because I got spotted by the Kampfpanzer in the A Phase 1, I don't know whether the Manticore has decided to attack the center. And wow, the A Phase 1 is right in front of me. We Amarak them with the first shot. They use their repair kit, which of course is default large repair kit. My team gets a lovely meaty shot in, and that allows me to finish off the AE Phase 1. And just like that, we've started off the battle, finishing off a Tier 9 vehicle. And while they're called a hard guest, you know what? Those are the kinds of customers who can come every single day to Quacky Baby Incorporated. We will farm them up at every given opportunity. Okay, so I do a little pirouette. Always like to reverse in this vehicle, because then you can run away faster. And now we have the information that we need as to where the Manticore is. There's no way that I would have got spotted in any way unless the Manticore was in the middle. And it kind of amazes me that the Manticore actually managed to sneak there when we must have literally... I must have just driven across here and they must have just bombed it along the side. Maybe they, they drove along here or they drove through the center and they're just sitting at a bush. And this is going to really put a fly in the ointment of my battle. I still want to try and get some shots in. And we're going to look for opportunities. And even without the damaging build on this vehicle, we're still able to get some efficient shots in. Every time we fire, we get spotted by the uh, the Manticore, though, unfortunately. And two out of three ain't bad. With the third one, I believe, just tracking the pattern as well. And this is that kind of hybrid role that you're going to have to build in your AMX 13105. All light tanks need to do pseudo damage dealing as well, right? However, the 13105 really will test you as a player to see if you can not only be the scout, but also to look at those kind of damaging opportunities. So the fact that I get spotted here means that the Manticore is no longer spotting me in the center, which kind of confused me at this situation, but it might be just that he's in a funky bush. So unfortunately for me, I take a big old round from the Hori 3 in the side, and as long as I don't get hit by the Charioteer, I should be okay. The Hori 3 actually had good enough camo to be sitting in that bush, and you can see that I couldn't even respot them as they fell back around the corner there. And oh dear, now down to 437 hit points. I did get a good amount of spotting on the Charioteer and the Hori in the 75, but uh, yeah, trading about a third of my, well, half of my hit points, I should say. For like a 1,400 spotting, that's really not going to, uh, to give us our third mark after all. The Gunner is down on the Charioteer, Eagle Eye coming up trumps there to enable me to make a better decision, which was to sit there in front of the charioteer and just hit the round. If they're firing AP, I survive kind of like seven times out of ten. If they're firing Hesh, well, they'll destroy me. But when their gun is dead, I should take that kind of a risk. And it's all of these things that will test you as a player in the 13105. Can you squeeze out one shell? Sure. Can you squeeze out two? Ooh, possibly three? Oh, very risky in that kind of a scenario. Players can often react within three seconds, but they will nearly always react within five and a half. And that's the difference between your second and your third shell on this vehicle. So it's definitely one of the reasons why I love this tank compared to the Bat Chat. The fact that it can deliver two shells and then reload and not have to spend like 40 seconds reloading and only have to spend about 25 seconds reloading just makes this thing feel so much more fun than the bat chat and why i would thoroughly recommend this tank i really would i think it is way more fun for the bat chat than the bat chat i should say and that's coming from someone who's um who's got about a thousand games played in the bat chat I love that vehicle. I used to love it even more. These days, it feels like it definitely could use a little bit of love, I think, from Wargaming. But it could be a dangerous one. If Wargaming buff it too much, it could be uh, a meta a meta shift for with regards to the bat chat. Okay, so now I've got a confession to make. The only reason why I 3-marked the 13105 is because I failed to 3-mark the bat chat recently. It was stressing me out. I think I could do it if I really put my mind to it and played like 100 battles in the bat chat. But... It just really wasn't an enjoyable tank. And so I went and I decided, hmm, I know I'm good enough to three mark tanks. You know, I'm gonna go three mark the 13105 instead just to show that it's it's the, the it's the fact that the bat chat isn't fun. Now I can three mark vehicles that aren't fun. I've recently done like the 121, I recently did like the 113 Beijing Opera, 
so on and so forth. I, I'm not accustomed to, I'm not unaccustomed to hardship inside World of Tanks. But I can tell you, this three mark felt so fun and so easy as well. Now, maybe I just got a good run of games. Who knows, there's probably a reason why I didn't three mark this thing until now. But I really think it was this idea of having two different builds on this vehicle and uh, really focusing as well and just trying to stay alive longer in the battle that has helped. So let's go see if we can find that Manticore. Now that their gun line has been thinned out and pushed back, hopefully we would be able to uh, find out where the Manticore is. And there we go. We don't actually spot them until a proxy spot. Crazy, right? Luckily, they shoot the Leopard prototype, and so I'm going to put a full mag into the Manticore. That feels really good after they harassing me the entire game. And now I'm going to hopefully get behind this rock to avoid the Ho-Ri 3 finishing me off so I can try and capitalize in the last parts of this battle. So that's my confession. I went to go and 3 mark the 13105 to make myself feel good because I failed in the bat chat, which I played like a thousand games in. Um, so, and it was so fun. Instantly, when I switched away from bat chat gameplay into 13105 gameplay, this was a much more enjoyable experience. The only time the bat chat is more fun than the 13105 is when you like go in after a tank destroyer and you get their side and you absolutely feast on them with those five rounds. But I think that happens maybe once a battle, once every couple of battles possibly, if you're lucky. Whereas the 13105, it just seems to have this more efficient mag which just absolutely claps. And I would sacrifice the two extra shells any day of the week to get the camo, to get the gun depression, and to be able to get the faster reload, which allows you to be way more reactive. And also that I get to play against light tanks. There's always a light tank on the enemy team. And if I get matched up against a light tank, but I can play as well as I would do if I was playing a medium, I'm going to do way better in a vehicle like this than I would do if I was trying to play a bat chat against something like a Centurion Action 10, for example. And the result is over 9,000 combined for the 13105, with a good amount of that having to be damaged because that Manticore was stopping us from being the pure scout in the battle. So this was an ace tanker, patrol duty, high caliber, confederate. We managed to get ourselves 9,700 combined, showing you that this vehicle, it's not just a scout. <laughs> it can do that very well if you set it up correctly, but it also has that one, two, three combo. So all of the games that you saw today happened within a 24 hour period. I played my 13105 on my main account. I played 16 games. I got a 94% win ratio, meaning I won 15 out of 16, over 6,000 W and 8, 3,500 average damage per game. And I think I was getting 2,000 extra assistance on top of that, 2.3 kills per game, showing you this thing is an absolute monster. If you focus up when it gets going, Quacky Baby doesn't always play like a sweaty tryhard. After all, I think this game is meant to be played more for fun than sweating your backside off. But when I do, I can't think of any more fun tank to play than the 13105. And so all in all, the 13105, it's right in the middle of the pack with regards to win rate and win rate differential. And equally, right in the middle of the pack with regards to its marks requirement, which is 4,300 currently on the European server. And I personally think this thing is underrated. I think it's not only one of the more competitive light tanks and it's also one of the more fun ones that you can play. So I thoroughly recommend dusting off your Amex 13105, setting it up like I've been suggesting, and remember I always put the build in the uh, description down below, and showing all of the other light tanks why the 13105 is the most dangerous. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the AMX 13105. Do you think it's an amazing vehicle? Do you think it's an awful vehicle? Do you manage to make it work? What builds do you use on the tank? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.